Content warning. The following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. East Side London. Also, I guess warning for British people. <laughs> East Side London, 1889. Charlie sobs into the dark. He doesn't want to be one of the abandoned boys. When Patch got stuck, Master Smith left him in there for a week until the landlord complained. They had to break up. Th had to break the wall with a hammer to get him out. Charlie hadn't seen it, but the other apprentices, apprentices said they found him curled up like he was asleep, but all stiff-like. Patch didn't sweep anymore after that. Charlie's knees are level with his chin. His head presses against the sweathering bricks and the brush he was holding is wedged against the backside. Doc. Wiggling around will only make it worse, so he stays still, thinking how to get out. Little John, uh, little Johnny got stuck once, and he said you just had to stuck, uh, yeah, suck in your belly real small and push off with your feet. But Johnny isn't called little for nothing, and besides, he was only five and a half when it happened. It usually happens to older boys who get stuck. Like Charlie. And most of the time, in a stuck chimney sweep is a dead chimney sweep. His thighs are already cramping, his left arm is free, so he uses it to push down one knee, trying to unfold his leg. It won't budge. His right arm is still pinned above his head, right where it was when he dropped the brush. Somehow it landed behind him, and the bristles poked into his back painfully. He reaches upward, feeling for a loose brick to pull himself up with. The chimney is so dark he can't tell the difference if his eyes are open or closed. His fingers so s finger, uh, fingers brush a soft clump of soot. It falls onto his face, already mid-breath. He pulls some into his lungs, and the coughing fit that follows reverberates up and down the shaft. The efforts the effort leaves him grasping for air. What are, what are ye doing up there? Fast or I'll burn ye. Burn your backside raw, Mr. Smith hollers from below. Help, Charlie chokes out, but a gloom dampens his words to a whisper. Astrid smoke stings his, na uh, his nostrils, and a heat licks his bare feet. Fire is meant to make him work faster, but since he can't move, it does all it does is scorch, scorch the bricks around him. His neck is already blistering from the from being pressed against the chimney shaft behind. He squirms in in panic, and only gets himself wedged deeper. Help! He screams. I'm stuck, Master Smith. I'm stuck, sir. Please help. The echoes sound like a hundred ghosts are with him inside the chimney. The thought. The thought makes Charlie's stomach kern. What if he isn't the first sweep to get stuck in there? It's so dark he would never see a ghost coming. It takes him a minute to notice the bricks have cooled. Stuck are ye, Master Smith shouts. Yes, sir, please send help, Charlie shouts back. There's no reply at first. In his mind, Charlie sees the master comp uh, contemplating a fingertip running through his soot-stained beard as he leans on his bundle of sweet brushes, thinking about how how much he'd have to pay to train another chimney sweep. Try and get out, the master says. I can't. I'm really stuck. Sir, can you please, uh, can someone pull me out? You out of your mind? Can't risk losing another one, and you're not even my best sweep. Try to get out, boy. Cramps and coughing forgotten. Every inch of Charlie's skin prickles with fear. He doesn't want to be one of the abandoned boys. Please, sir. Anybody. Little John, he'll help me. He will, sir. Please, Charlie cries. But the master is already gone. Tears run stark lines through the soot on his face. Not dribbles out of his nose on into the back of his mouth until, until he spits it down the shaft. He wipes his face with his free hand but it only gets gritty specks into his eyes. Blinking really fast just makes it worse. Charlie cries until he, 
He's sure all the water in his body is gone. His tongue is dry and his throat makes a rough scratching sound whenever he swallows. Whatever came out of his nose was all dried. Was has, has dried all crusty like. It pinches his skin whenever he sniff, sniffs, which is often. His legs are numb. The bristles in his back feel sharper. And his toes feel like hot pins are poking them. The cramps have spread to pin um, to his pinned right arm and the back of his neck. And uh, it was evening. It was evening when he first uh, scrambled up the chimney. Master Smith said it would be a quick job before Christmas supper. Now, Tommy rumbling. Charlie is sure he missed all, all of the fun. Christmas is the only day of the year. Uh, coster mongers will give out apples and oranges for free. Coral, car, carol singers roam the street, and for once, everyone is smiling. He stands, strains his ears, hoping to catch a stray note of music or any hint of the world outside. All he, he can hear is his heartbeat and ragged breaths keeping him alive. But how much longer? He needs food and some water, and he needs to piss. Help, he screams once, twice, a dozen more uh, times more. The chimney shaft mag magnifies his voice and his fears with it. The echoes are louder now, as if the ghosts are closing in and the bricks are freezing cold. He thrashes about, free and scrambling against the walls, but he is no longer... He is no less stuck than before. The walls close in around him, suffocating. A warm heaviness fills his trousers, spreading to wet his belly and drip down from his toes. Shame smothers Charlie even worse than the soot. If he ever gets out, the others will never forget he pissed himself. Somehow it's worse than the idea of dying here. Charlie sobs again as he drifts away. He is like a patch. He is one of the abandoned boys. O oh, town of Bolemia, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The, sil the silent stars go by, yet in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met of in the, the night. Farley wakes to pain, but he blinks, confused. It is not the pain he expects. He is still stuck, unable to move ev anything except his left arm. But the cramps throughout his body have fade away, faded away to numbness. The brush still, spoke, still pokes him from behind. The pain that woke him f is from his head. Something hard had fallen from the shaft above, bouncing off his head before nest nestling neatly on his knees. He feels for it in the darkness. His fingers brush something firm and rubbery. When he lifts it to his nose, his stomach growls in response. Red. A whoosh echoes from above like a breath of air. He is followed, followed by a dull sliding sound. The thing sounds big, but expecting it this time, Charlie duck, sticks his, out his arms to block its path. He sends... He sets it in between his knees and his chin, feeling all over the shape. A bottle. Help, he screams, tilting his head back. You up there, get help me get out. The only only silence responds, darker than soot. He calls up the shaft again and again. No response. A sob escapes through dry lips as he looks back to the heavy package on his knees. The cloth... Uh, Wrapped around the side of outside is thick and all soft like. It might be wool. He's seen it before, worn by fancy rich people. Charlie's first thought is that he's not the biggest apprentice or the oldest or even the best. Is one so one of the others bound is bound to take it from him. Then he remembers he's abandoned. He pulls the cloth across to cover himself. It sits awkwardly, but warms him all the same. The bottle is big and heavy, and has a cork in the top. 
Charlie rips it out with his teeth, sniffs the liquid at all inside. It has no smell at all. Without a second thought, he gulps down so much water that the bottle isn't heavy anymore. Worried, he shakes it, but the slooshing sound makes him feel better. The bread follows, gobbled up in seconds. Despite himself, he feels better. His body begins to hurt again, as if it now has the energy to remain, to remind him that he's stuck. The weight of the bottle on his knees is a, cover, a comfort. He waits for something else to fall down the shaft. Hours pass. He stays awake as long as he can, but knowing he'll fall asleep eventually, he folds his left arm over his head for protection, time and space losing their meaning, since neither of them seem to change. The next time Brett arrives from above, Charlie is awake and waiting. He plucks out it out of the air and wolfs it down with a less with the last of the water. A second regret comes and goes, then, to his surprise, another chunk of bread lands on his knees. As he chews, Charlie tries moving again, still stuck. Worry gnaws at him. How long can someone live all squished like? What if food makes him fat and even more stuck? He shudders. What if the ghosts are sending food to fatten him up for their supper? He doesn't scream for help again. Over what must be days, food and water come through the shaft three more times, but Charlie's hunger overcomes his fear. He scoffs bread and chugs the water until his tummy rumbles again, this time for another reason. He whimpers in shame, unable to hold his night soil anymore. It smears into his trouser, and watery parts trickle down his ankles. The smell has him wrinkling his nose in disgust. The pain in his limbs are unbearable now, a deep ache that makes him weak all over. He bows his head, tears falling again, as he thinks about living the rest of his life in his own muck. When they find his body, the other apprentices will laugh and point, saying Charlie pissed and soiled himself in tune of ring of ring of ring of roses. Master Smith will shake his head, muttering that he was good for nothing anyway. You'll find another chimney sweep. Charlie will be forgotten. That'll be that. Abandoned. A soft thud wakes Charlie, so soft that he thinks it might be his own heartbeat at first. But it's not inside of his chest. It's coming from somewhere else, all muffled like thud. It's louder. He's awake now, lucky about him, panic. Even though there's nothing to see, thud. Another chimney. Uh, the entire tim uh, chimney shakes. He cries out in fear. The fear turns to anguish when the half-full bottle of water topples over before he can grab it. Since he hasn't replaced the cork, all the water pours onto his already sodden trousers. Sodden trousers. Thud. Charlie buries his fingers in his ear. Terrified, he shakes his head all over. When he imagined the ghosts coming from him, he thought he they would be all quiet like sneaking through the dark he never thought that they would break the whole chimney down and rip him to pieces thud the next one is even louder fine powder spills from the walls left trickling his nose tickling his nose he wriggles around and something sharp bites into his back thud something cracks he shuts his eyes tight and waits for the pain which bone did they break which part of them him are they going to eat first thud he screams and screams and screams and screams thud 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 the breaks, uh, the bricks to his left shatter, and all Charlie sees is a blinding light.